This library, hands down, has the best. It could happen to you. No matter what your political persuasion, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, when you walk away from the museum, you'll take one thing with you. If you're a dog lover, or even if you're not a dog lover, I've got a picture for you. And it's really, I would say, a picture that very few people have seen. Before you visit the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library Museum, you've got to watch this review. I'm going to cover everything you need to know. Parking, food, admission costs, exhibits, gift shops, everything that will help you make the most of your visit. Are you ready? Let's do it. The George H.W. Bush Presidential Library Museum is located in College Station, Texas, right there on the campus of Texas A&M. Now, when it comes to parking, in my opinion, out of the three presidential libraries there in Texas, this library, hands down, has the best. It's uh, in a very open area there of campus. There's no other buildings blocking it, no other trees. Uh, it's directly across from the museum, and best of all, it's free parking. When it comes to admission, the library is very very reasonable, like some other presidential libraries. They have a wide variety of discounts they offer to various groups. They have group rates available. Make sure you also note when planning that there's no cafeteria there at the library. There's no restaurant. So take that into account. Uh, you have to travel about five or ten miles into College Station for other food options. When it comes to the staff, I found the staff very friendly, very helpful there at the main desk. They have free Wi-Fi. You can take pictures. You can take video. They just don't allow flash photography photography like most museums. When it comes to the museum layout, I think it flowed very, very smoothly, very open, and just sort of takes you through chronologically George H.W. Bush's years. And really, George Bush, his resume was, I think, one of the, the most impressive resumes of anybody that became U.S. president. Stop and think about it. Yale educated, World War II veteran, a businessman, U.S. congressman, U.N. ambassador, chairman of the Republican Party, ambassador to China, CIA director, eight years as vice president and four years as president. Need I say more? When it comes to the exhibits, there, give yourself about an hour and a half to two hours to really have the proper amount of time to go through and check out the exhibits. I found the exhibits very eye-catching. You can clearly distinguish uh, between a transition in time from one time period to the next. For instance, the World War II exhibit has a huge uh, replica Avenger plane that George W. Bush flew while he was in World War II. They're hanging right over that whole exhibit. There's a U.S. Capitol Dome showing his congressional years. There's a setup for the U.N. General Assembly that sort of details his year time as U.N. ambassador. And then his White House years, you walk through the north portico of the White House. It could happen to you. No matter what your political persuasion, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, when you walk away from the museum, you'll take one thing with you, and that is a newfound respect respect and an appreciation for a man who gave his life to public service. He considered public service a noble act. He felt like it was something that he owed his country. His father had passed that attitude on to him. And George H.W. Bush does the same thing with members of his own family. But when you go throughout the exhibits, they have some great interactive exhibits. They have a press room theater that you can walk into and stand at a podium and read a teleprompter. They've got a situation room set up, a replica, right outside the Gulf War exhibit that you can sit down with other people and you can learn about the events that led up to the Gulf War. Uh, one of the exhibits that really stood out to me was the Duty, Honor, Country exhibit, and that was the World War II exhibit. And this exhibit made a profound impact on me personally. I never realized how young Bush was when he served in World War II. And I have a young college-age son myself. And I didn't realize how brave Bush was. And I definitely didn't know how humble of a man he was about the whole his whole time of serving there in World War II. You really can't walk away without being impacted. There's an Oval Office exhibit there at the Bush Library. It's a replica. I, I was kind of disappointed. I'm not gonna lie. I expected the Oval Office exhibit to be a little bigger, but it's not to full size, they tell you that. But it is decorated up the way that George Bush had it while he was in office. And you can sit down behind the desk and have take some pictures. There's also a replica of Camp David, of George Bush's officer at Camp David. And you can look at some of the artifacts. Some of the artifacts are the original artifacts that he had on display 
while he was present and when he would go and visit uh, Camp David there on the weekend. You know, in his later years, Bush was diagnosed with a form of Parkinson's disease, and it made him wheelchair bound. And I learned something about one of the least known Bushes. He showed up in the last six months of Bush's life, and he never left his side. His name was Solly, Solly H.W. Bush. He was President Bush's service dog. And during those latter months, a very strong bond was created between both. If you're a dog lover, or even if you're not a dog lover, I've got a picture for you. And it's really, I would say, a picture that very few people have seen. It's a heartwarming picture of Sully, who literally stayed by President Bush's side even after his death. Make sure you check out the museum store before you leave. It's not extremely large. It's kind of narrow in some uh, parts, but there's a wide variety of souvenirs, and you definitely can see the nautical theme with some of the uh, souvenirs that you can purchase there. The Bushes love the sea. Uh, they did have a home there in Kenny, Kenny Bunkport, Maine. And, but you have the opportunity to check out their uh, online store. You should do that before you uh, go to the museum. You can price some of the things, take a look at some of the things that the museum store offers. Make sure that as you're leaving the museum, you take the time to go down and see the grave site. Uh, there's a beautiful pond behind the museum there. It's called Presidential Pond. And you can uh, walk from the museum front door for about a half a mile up behind uh, and through the woods behind the presidential pond there. You go through the woods there and then you come out into an opening there and you can see the, the grave sites uh, there. They're gated up. It's on very beautifully manicured grass. But there you can see the, the headstones of President Bush, of his wife Barbara and their youngest daughter, Robin, who died at a, at a very young age from, from cancer. Make sure that you take the time to go back and pay your respects. I told you the World War II exhibit had the biggest impact on me personally. And if you haven't checked out my video, U.S. President Evades Capture and Cannibalism, I go through the brave story of George H.W. Bush being shot down as a young pilot and his attempts to stay alive in his uh, later rescue. I promise you won't be disappointed. If you like what you watched today and you think there's value in it, hit the like button for us and also make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Share our video, share our channel with your friends and family.